Nice. Um, so yeah, the, go check out those videos. That should be fun. All right. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions before we get going? And honestly, if there's any ever, if there's ever any requests, um, please, please request it. I'm always up for, I mean, I always choose the stuff that I'm, that I'm into at the moment, but if there's stuff that you guys are into, please send it. Wow. That's so nice. Is his mouth open? <laughs> his mouth is open and that's his tongue. Are we going to be able to do that? without it looking completely weird. <laughs> He's got his mouth open. Look at his little chickadee tongue. Is it, is it forked at the end? I think it's forked. Yikes. Oh. The and highlights in his eye makes it look very curious. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Like, I wonder if this is staged. Meaning... Like, do you think this is, I mean, he's definitely alive, but like, is it in the studio? You know, do they have a, is this in like a photographer's studio? Look at that harsh shadow. Hmm. Or could it be a flash bulb? I mean, usually the reflections in the eye are, you know, they're the light source. So what do you think the light source is? Are the two bulbs come on focus, focus? See, that's what's so neat about this camera, too. It's like it. I mean, this is way closer than I can even see. Like, I can, it's way bigger on the screen than I would ever be able to see with my eye. And my eyes are not what they used to be, people. I used to be able to focus on things when they're like this close. And like, it was like my eye was a magnifying glass. And now I can't even focus on it. I can't focus on my hand this far away. Look how far that is. Like a, within a foot, I can't focus on it. That's what age is. <clears throat> but I've, my eyes have been, I'm not complaining. My eyes have given, have been, whew, they've been my best friend, basically. Um, all right, let me see if I can get a piece. How should I set this up? Um, so yeah, we probably need, I don't know. Should we just go right into color pencil? Um, I also, I think the other thing that's been like influencing me in terms of choosing content is I've had this pencil all weekend. This is my uh, tri-color, this is my tri-color uh, color pencil, which I've been obsessed with. And uh, it's not going to do it. That's like this. Love my pencil camera. Yes. There it is. Look how beautiful that is. I mean, it basically it's a chickadee in the end of my pencil because it's like a dark gray, a black, and a and a light gray or a mid-tone gray. Anyway, they're all stretched together and it's like it makes up the whole thing. <clears throat> now I don't know if I'd be able to, but I can't control it necessarily. Hmm. Hmm. That would be that would be that would be quite the challenge. All right, let's just maybe do this one in graphite to start off with. It's not gonna it's not gonna hurt anybody. Send it this way. It's Monday morning. I feel like it, we need to. It's Monday. Let's start off with graphite. I don't have to jump full blown. All right, this is on there. Oh, there's a, there, the word on the street is that Stacy's going to join, um, but we'll not. We'll, we'll I'll believe it when I see it. You know. All right. Oh, where to begin? Um, so this is the other interesting. The one thing I've been noticing, I've just just eyeballing it. There seems to be a relatively clear distinction between the masses of the bird's um, head. Um, and then like the bird's body. And I've, I've, I've been desperately like wanting to make the body of the chickadee an oval because that's just like my instinct. And I think the bottom of it is sort of, you know, it definitely feels like an, an egg. Um, I think there's an egg in there. Um, yeah, definitely. But I was also saying that it felt a little blocky too. Like there, like there seemed to be like 
a really straight back end. Look how straight that back end is. I mean, from like the 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 nape, the back of the neck, nape of the neck, all the way down. There's like this really powerful vector. Um, and I mean, yes, there's all this. There's like the nape. There's like the skull, and then there's the neck. Then there's what I think is this light gray, which is at the top of the, the wing. Then it leads into another arc, which is basically layered feather tips. And then there's the uh, layered wing tips, you know, these long, thin blades. You know, so there's like, you know, one, two, three, four separate forms that we're gonna have to indicate along this one diagonal. Um, but still, nonetheless, it's a pretty harsh angle. And then, you know, there's like a very clear, almost like horizontal, you know, separating the uh, the head from the body, not with the feathers, um, but with the form. Um, yeah, so I it's it's like when you do like a tiger or a, like a big cat, any or any cat that has like a um, has a pattern to it. You've got to not get caught up in the like the camouflage. You know, the the leopard prints or the tiger stripes. You know, or you know, or like even like even like in a lion where there's like light patches and dark patches, um, you kind of got to get the structure first. Um, and then we can then, then you lay in the pattern on, you know, on top. So um, that's where I think I'm going to like try to go here. So we've got like this, the oval for the head, and then we've got this really beautiful, you know, kind of transition from the back of the, the skull down the neck and then, of course, we've got all these like different patterns on here, but we're not going to get we're not going to fall for it. Um, we're going to get the oval for the head, place the eye, triangle for the beaks. And then I guess we'll use the oval. I'm going to use an oval, but like knowing that that neck is like really thick, at least with the feathers, it's kind of thick. And then we're going to transition from you know the back from like basically the neck down the spine until, you know, his 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 tucked wings and the wings are tucked in then they basically, you know, come in front of the, the spine. And then the spine, of course, is going to continue through to give you the tail feathers um, and then, you know, the long tail feathers. Oh, actually, that might, that little triangle right there, this is the right wing. And then I think the left wing comes other, uh, under and gives like little scissors. Do you see those little scissor tips right there? Those are going to be some sweet triangles. And then we get the, you know, this is the actual tail under here that the tail feathers are attached to. Cool, we got the, you know, his belly leading into um, the legs and the legs are kind of buried um, underneath those down feathers. Okay, um, again, the fun part of this is is going to be coloring it. it Cause especially in graphite, um, cause there's only black, white and gray. So, you know, with, in terms of choosing something that uh, graphite would be compatible with, you know, this is definitely one of them. Uh, oh man, all right. So sometimes if I find, if I talk my way through this, um, I, my fear level goes down, um, then you just have to kind of like jump. You just have, I'm, jump, I'm jumping in here. Um, I'm trying to keep an eye out for Stacy. Let me drop these down in case she pops up. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get to the top of my viewing rectangle. So I gotta stay within these parameters. And I could zoom. I'll, I'll once I get the the structure of the whole body, um, I'll be able to zoom in, and we can detail the face, we can detail the different wings. But we got to be able to see the whole in its general sense, um, and make sure those proportions are strong. And then we can come in and detail the thing. All right. Um, also, stay open to um, possibly adding other chickadees within this compositions. So this one's probably going to be pretty large. This is the largest, most zoomed in as of the photos, but we can add other chickadees from other angles, you know, as we go. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's fly. All right. So here's my oval. He's looking really kind of like sideways. And I don't know if this is true for like all birds, but what I've been noticing is when I establish my oval, of an interesting rule of thumb is that if you find the center of that oval, the eye is usually either centered or slightly above center. That's like kind of where I'm going for. And when I say above center, I mean on the horizontal, and then it's gotta be in front, I would say, of the halfway. 
cool. Um, the beak is this really elegant pinched triangle. So when I say pinched triangle, I mean, I have all these extra scrap sheets of paper. So if this is a triangle, boom, boom, boom. The pinched triangle, it's like concave, concave, and concave. That is, that's what I mean. So it's like, it's not, it's, it's a try. It's got three sides and then it's a triangle, but it's got a little bit different of a, of a movement. And we will be able to detail that a lot later. All right, let's see. I think Dara just got in here. Yeah, she did. Let's see if the audio is up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dara, if you want to give me a thumbs up or just like get on and be like, yeah, I can hear you. Your picture is, um... oh, there you are. Okay, cool. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so you haven't missed anything, really. I've just been yapping, trying to get my confidence up enough to like put my pencil to the paper. Um, so, and I, sometimes I lay down, uh, you know, uh, tracing paper or like transparency and I'll like find the shapes. Um, but this is, you know, this bird is, there's not that many shapes. So, and you know, it's, sometimes it's nice to just go for it too. Um, okay. So we started with an oval and as I was like attempting to place the eye and the beak, I broke that oval into four parts, you know, just so I could like subdivide it in my mind. Um, and then of course the beak is going to overlap, you know, our oval and we have this really interesting, you know, again, we're going to come back and do the beak, but it looks like the lower beak and the upper beak feel like they have the same distance off of the head, which is wild, you know, like right here, the tips seem like they go, you know, usually the upper beak is a little bit bigger than the lower beak. Um, I'm going to do this little curved triangle in the middle for the tongue. <clears throat> I'm just looking for my shapes and that looks good. So um, when you get a head of any object or any animal, I should say, not an object, an, uh, an animal, getting the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears, you know, established, you know, you, is even before you do the rest of the body, you do a human, you know, a lot of times you start with the head, rib cage, pelvis, but like, even when you get the head and you get the angle, you can't tell if you have the angle of the head, right? unless the eyes are right. And in this case, the eyes don't tell you a whole lot here, but the beak tells you a ton. So, you know, you know eyes, nose, um, and of course, you know, the, your little nostril hole, not very telling. And of course we don't have any ear either. They're, they do here, but they don't have any external ears to like kind of guide us. All right, so we can do this little angle of the neck. So I get the angle of the back of the neck and then the front of the neck is coming off the chin. And then I'm seeking in my mind's eye, the angle, and it's not necessarily based on the tail, but coincidentally, the angle of the underside of the tail, that's well, not exactly right now. Yeah, I'm, 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 I was right in that you don't wanna follow anything else other than the angle of the egg because the wings and the feathers and the tail and the, and the limbs are all gonna be, you know, it's different from that vector. So I'm looking, using my x-ray vision, you know, my head is running sideways, almost perpendicular. And then the body is angled at a diagonal. And then out of that, I can use the back, you know, his back. I can use his belly. You know, this is essentially an enclosure. I'm trying to build an oval, but I'm trying to do it observationally and intelligently. So this is the front of the chest. Um, that's going to lead in eventually to the, to the leg. And then the angle back here is going to eventually get overtaken by the angle of the feathers. But I want to see my general subterranean uh, egg shape. Because it's just a good principle to work off of. All right. Um, so when you get head, um, so this is like the head, which is the first oval. With birds, the rib cage and the pelvis, the pelvis is usually buried so deep um, within the feathers 
that it's hard to like, you, you basically never experience the, the bone structure um, of that. But if you wanted to, for your own like peace of mind, or even like, you know, just to like subdivide it, just so you, in your own mind, you know that there is a pelvis there. You have the upper part of the oval, which is essentially, um, you know, rib cage. And you'll have this lower bottom of the egg. This like the bottom of the egg. We'll call that the pelvis. So um, that should work. Um, and the first part we got to do is, oh, that's interesting. Let's do the full blown, let's do the full blown, um, you know, bone structure for um, like, like x-ray vision. So, and it's not that hard, but I'm going to go, I'm going to imagine where the shoulder is. Shoulder goes to the elbow. Then the elbow goes to the wrist. And that's where we're getting what appears to be the shoulder. It's not the shoulder. This is actually the wrist. And out of that is where we're going to get our big teardrop shape of the mass of our feathers. Wow, nice. And all you have to do is like the chicken dance. And you know, your fingers are the wingtips and your wrist is right here. So this is shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist. And the wrist gives you this long triangle. And again, we're just thinking, you know, in terms of shapes, no details yet. All right, so we can reverse engineer um, well, no, let's just keep going 360. Um, so we have the shoulder elbow, um, the, the spine, you know, you have the skull, which comes up here and then the back of the skull ends and it turns into the neck and then the neck turns into the spine and the spine is going to pass down, uh, below, you know, behind the wing. And then it's going to lead us into the tail. So the, even the spine is probably even buried deep in there, but you can still use it. So then we've got the tail feathers and then we can add the long, you can call it a trapezoid, you can call it a, rect, uh, a rectangle, but it's so interesting. Let me move, oh yeah, can you see that? Yeah, I'll move it up. The tongue is a little fork at the end, maybe. And then the, the uh, tail tip is forked too. So cool. Um, I didn't misspeak, but I did, I did miss C. Um, there is the triangle wingtips, which I think the, the, the left wing comes from behind the spine here and comes through and comes out the bottom. Whereas our right wing comes through this way. So I think that is what we're experiencing down here. So these feathers are tail feathers. But these are wingtip feathers that are from the other, basically the wing that we're not seeing that's you know, hidden on the other side. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, we're gonna look for this little um, really important rectangle. I'm gonna attach it to the side of the uh, oval. This right here, this rectangle of feathers right here, this is the transition at the ankle. So this is the ankle down to the ball of the foot. And then we have these um, talons. I'm not gonna detail the talons, but the reason this is so important is that in terms of the, we have to start from the known and move into the unknown. So this is the ankle, ankle to the ball of the foot. So this are basically, he's like very tippy toes. Then if you think about our ankle, our ankle goes from our ankle to our knee, and then our knee goes to our hips. So our, you know, the, um, the drumstick of the bird is ankle to um, knee. And then his thigh is knee to hips. And his thigh is buried deep in here, but it's so strong. So it goes, um, feet to ankle, ankle to knee, and then knee to hip. And the hip is all the way back here. It's, you know, the hip is gonna be basically be in the middle of our, you know, little bottom of the uh, egg shape. And I'm just gonna draw a bone here, a little hip bone, little, fe little um, femur. And then the, I mean, the, the thighs, I mean, I eat chicken thighs like, 
it's like they're Doritos. I mean, I, basically like three times a week we're eating chicken thighs. So if you just relate it to like, if I'm sorry if you're a vegetarian or whatever, um, but um, the drumstick is knee to ankle. That's here. This is the drummy. Now, not, I'm not talking about wings, but you know, the legs. And then, you know, this is the part where you never see on the actual the cooked bird because that's what they take off. And the, the feathers begin from the ankle and go to the foot. So the feet don't have any feathers, but everything else does. I mean, if I did it up here, I might as well do it. If I did it down here, I'll do it up here too. So then if you do think about wings, you have the shoulder to elbow, and that is the little drummies. When you order wings, the drumstick little wings is shoulder to elbow. Then elbow to wrist are the flats. So if you think about your own radius in your ulna, in your forearm, these are the flats. So you get two bones in there and those are attached. And then the wing tips, um, you know, those usually get discarded, but sometimes there's some places that leave them on there. And it's a little lazy, a little gnarly. Um, all right, so thank God for pencils. We can erase everything. Um, all right, hip to knee, shoulder elbow elbow to wrist and then these wingtips are just so gorgeous how like so this is the wingtip here and then all of these massive feathers are going to be running off of it and then hip to knee knee to ankle ankle to foot i'm just going to zoom in on the face um do we need to do any extra feathers there's like feathers down here we got these long tail feathers there. We got these wingtips. We're gonna just go from head to toe. Let's go from head to toe. I'm gonna drop this down, and then I'm gonna cut off this edge because I have extra room. So get even closer. Mm -hmm. No, I'll use my... That was cutting it close, literally. Okay, so let me drop this down. I'll get closer to the face. Um, that is the nice thing about having really good reference material. I mean, this is I'm not. It's I'm not even gonna be able to get that close. Maybe if I fold it, I just want you to be able to see it really high end. <clears throat> Of course, I drew mine so large. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is fun. We get to we have to make our marks um, kind of appear to be. I don't know what the word is. We have to make our marks mimic these feathers and the different types of feathers. So. There's one of the things that you can, you know, one of the, one of the interesting things about most birds is that the feathers start really small, close to the, um, like on the face and close to the beak. And they almost look like hairs. And that is, I mean, you can even like, you can, the way that hair grows on like the faces of dogs and animals and stuff, you know, there's an order to it. So you can get this like, you can get your strokes, even in the light areas, you can still get your marks to echo the direction and like the pattern of the, the growth pattern, I should say, of the, uh, of the feathers on the bird's face. So here we go, people. Um, oh, that's the other thing. And I think I probably mentioned this to you all before, but um, the guy that, who like draws birds, he's like on, you know, He's on the news and everything. He does like a lot of the um, field guides, like Audubon field guides and stuff. Like he's a bird illustrator. He'll draw from nature. Um, and the way he does it, he starts from the beak 
and he goes into the head and then he goes from the head into the neck and then the neck into the body. He follows that order. I know we've drawn birds before, um, but I just want to like, you know, reiter reiterate that because it's, it's a good strategy. And since we've got the whole mass of this thing in here, we're, 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 we're in this position where we have to like, we have to draw the drawing. So we have to erase construction lines that we don't need um, and make it look like a chickadee. Okay, let's do first things first. Here's this beak. There's a nostril hole there. Oh my goodness. Um, this is a little bit annoying. Um, we're looking at the beak silhouetted by this hole. I mean, it's like, it's like where the, it's like where he's living. It's like, it's, it's like a hole in the log. So everything that, that he's up against for the whole rest of the picture is, you know, basically a, I think a, a, a piece of wood that's in the light. We're here, we're looking at a hole. So it's, you know, it's hard to tell where the, the beak ends and where like the, you know, the atmosphere behind it begins. So this is to start here, it might probably be one of the most, you know, difficult aspects of the picture to, you know, to visualize because it's not ideally lit. Um, wow, that tongue is incredible. I don't know if you can see this, but I believe this part that I'm pointing to is the underside of the tongue. If you like stick your own tongue out, there's like that little webbing that's at the bottom in the middle. I think in theory, that's kind of what the form is. And then you're seeing the underside and then it bends down and you're seeing the top. Holy goodness. Okay, so here's the top. And then this is the underside. <laughs> Remember everyone, we're having fun. And then the bottom beak is incredible too. Um, it reminds me of like a gutter or like a um, a spade. You know, how you think about like a a spade that you plant, um, you, you know, you plant bulbs with. You know, there's like this. It, it's concave down. You know, in one sense, you could probably see the underside of that shovel. There's the there's the handle to the shovel. Give it a cylinder. But this, like the fact that you can see the inner triangular, um, you know, concavity of that beak is really interesting. So you can you actually see the far side of the beak and the outside of the beak at once. So imagine this, I'm gonna draw the outside of the beak first. And then I'm gonna draw the other side of the beak. And there's a little shadow on the underside of the beak underneath that tongue. Cool. I mean, that is a miracle that I got that. That is not my mute. My brain is not really smart enough to do that. I don't know how I just did it. Um, then we'll do the, we can shade in the beak maybe a little bit. And then as you shade it in, just like leave some spots because it's a shiny, the beak is shiny. So we can shade most of it, but leave, leave a lot of that little, little like white exposed. Whoa, that's awesome. All right, there's now, now, now what's kind of fun is that we have, there's a lot of different directions we can go. Um, we could start from the, we could go underneath. You could show like the, how the bottom jaw enters into the front of the neck, like the esophagus area. And then there's this black patch that's underneath here. That's one avenue we could go. Um, we could go from the, you know, this nostril hole that's in here, which is the, basically the middle, like the beak going directly west, like straight west. Um, and seeing what the feathers are, where, you know, where the beak actually transitions into the head. And I think the thing is we have to do basically all of them at one point. Um, there's this like white little patch, you know, so we have the black patch that's immediately underneath the chin. Then there's this white kind of, it would almost be like a, 
yeah, I don't even know what that is. That's weird. Um, I was thinking I was going to compare it to like a human's face, but like that would be imagine if we had hair above our nose. Like there, we have hair beneath our nose, which is like mustache. And then we have like hair beneath our mouth, which is basically like beard hair or chin hair or something. But there's not any, there's nothing that we can relate to in between our eyes and our nose. Um, so that's what this, that's what the patterns are in between the nostril and the eye. This is where, you know, this is like, we're in the purely animal realm. Like you can't compare it to human anatomy. Um, okay, so that's going east, or excuse me, going west, and that's going to lead us into the eye. You know, usually I'm looking for a tear duct, and I don't even see a tear duct. It's such a weird shape. Maybe the tear duct's here, and then I'll do this big arch up and a, and a small curve to the bottom. Um, the eye, what I love about most birds' eyes is that you know you don't really see a whole lot of like pupil necessarily, not necessarily a whole lot of iris because it's all so dark. We can leave that highlight in there. So with the eye itself, the reflective part is usually pretty dark. Um, but what it, what they have is this like dinosaur like eyelid that has like you know in this in this and the chickadee has this. And if they feels, it feels like uh, like scales, like dinosaur scales. And it relates, you know, it's like similar style skin that's on their feet and on their talons. And if you've ever seen any bird's feet, I mean, they're like straight dinosaur, like velociraptor. Um, okay, so yeah, so that's it. I'm just trying to put the the, you know, the dinosaur border around the eye. And then the eyes are so dark. Then I'm just going to put these two little dots in there. Um, that's me protecting the, the reflection. So I can shade the whole rest of the eye, except for those two highlights. And frankly, it's probably best if there's just one highlight. I mean, that, that's like when there is a reflection in the eye, it gives life like instantly, like my bird just completely came alive with that, with that, um, with that reflection. And, you know, that, that moisture, like that, the control of moisture and the harnessing of moisture by, you know, animals is just so miraculous. Like, it's just, it's an amazing thing to consider. Um, again, um, I'm trying not to get fooled too much by the pattern. Um, I can see that there's, you know, some feathers that are beneath the eye. I'm going to go back to the beak and I'm looking at this kind of punk rock, um, salt and pepper, um, you know, black feathers and white feathers together. And, you know, they, it looks like they want to like, you know, like stand up because they're so short. And then as they get longer, it seems like they behave. They're like laying down as it goes, but as they, um, as those feathers get longer on the head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so last, so not last comment, but um, we've got the beak, we've got the eyes. Now there's the pattern. So there's like this white stripe. Um, so that's, that's interesting. So the, the bottom half of the um, face leading into the neck and shoulders is white. The whole top half of the head is black with a white stripe. It's like a racing stripe. Um, and then that is balanced out by a black patch below. So it goes um, mixed salt and pepper. Then it goes uh, black head, white stripe, um, kind of like black runner down the side of the head, white patch underneath black patch in the front that's the that's kind of the the anatomy of the the tone of this guy oh my goodness stacy's in the house let's hear what she has to say mm -mm. um so yeah i'm gonna do some coloring i'm gonna do straight coloring and i'm gonna attempt to make 
the black stripe along the top. And then I'm gonna make the black patch um, around the eye. So how do I, using graphite, how do I make a white stripe? Well, we do a black stripe on the top and a black stripe below. And it's the paper that's left between is what's gonna give you the, those light notes. Um, it makes it a little bit interesting too, because um, the feathers are a little bit shiny. So, you know, even in the, the, the black racing stripe on the top of the head, it feels like there are some lighter areas because the light is reflecting off the, is the, the glossy feathers. Stace, are you here? No. Oh, okay. Well, let me know when you get here. I will. I will. Did you just start recording when you knew that I was coming into the room? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, okay. Didn't. We've, been just, just... We've been recording the whole time. Ah, okay. Can anyone else uh, substantiate that comment? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stacy, you're so, you, I like how you question everything. Mm, well, I know you. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, mean, I wouldn't lie. No, you would kid. That's true. I would be a kid. Yes, 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 yes. So you you kind of missed a lot. Well, I'm you. You're not going to believe how quickly I catch up. This will oh, be. I like that attitude, Stacy. Yep, 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 yep. Wow. You will be. Wow, you must have eaten your Wheaties today. I did. I did not. I ate my Cheerios, and that is Do you the really trick eat, for me. You really eat Cheerios? No. Okay. I was kidding. <laughs> um, oh man, this this black patch underneath here, without everything else, it looks like a um, it looks like a chicken's like waddle or whatever. <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I love this pattern of the. Uh, I love the pattern of that, the white patch. The racing stripes are super fun above. They're like these two calming, like continental masses of the, the throat and the side of the face leading into the shoulders. They're nice, they're nice shapes. Um, you know, the, this, you know the, 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 the Cleopatra, you know, mascara, you know, corner of the eye here, the stripe that's in the middle. That matches, you know, that blends into yeah. the, the mohawk stripe. So. All right, I'm gonna zoom out because I'm sure many of you are ready for it. He's still so handsome. It's still so legible from that far away. We did need to, we did need to go in and zoom in, but. Zoom in, did you say? I did. Details of the face were so fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course my head's too late, too large, but I don't know. Aww. It, it, so now this is kind of cool. If we come down the front, um, the nape of the neck and the beak kind of get lost because they're both black uh, the, the throat i should say the throat and the and the beak kind of get lost in the void of the hole in the tree um which you know that's the only part that it doesn't serve the front of the um you know where the where the his chest gets lighter that is better you know because it's a it's a dark up against the it's a light chest up against light feathers up against the dark of the hole. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take it real easy shading the background up here. I mean, I do want my beak and I want my throat to be um, a you know a dark up against a, a light, even though it may not be like that in real you know in the observation. Um, and then I do want my light feathers of the you know the chest and the belly to be up against the dark. So this is dark against light, whereas the, the light feathers are light against dark. And I think I got a little overzealous with those talons. I'm gonna shrink the, uh, 
those two grippies. It's kind of like the, um, almost like the knuckles. And then the fingers are formed. One, two, three with the fingernail. One, two, three with the fingernail. And I think those essentially repeat. I think I just erased them to make them smaller and made them the exact same size. Then I'm just going to listen to the direction of this. No, um, by shading in backgrounds here, I don't know if you guys can even, I, hopefully you can see it. Um, these marks, you know, create a lot of movement. So, I mean, they could look like the bird is moving, could look like the background is moving. It looks like if I make marks that go like this, it looks like he's like call, like calling out. Um, the, the, you know, vectors in the background wind up um, creating a lot of energy. And if you wish to have that energy, it's useful. Um, if, you, if, if, if you're not intending it, that's where the tortillion really comes in because then we can um, translate those marks into soft tones. So, so far we've been really using marks to indicate the nature of the feathers. Um, and I think we should continue to do that. You know rough feathers or smooth feathers. Um, and by softening this background, um, I think will allow for the viewer's attention to kind of, you know, remain focused on the bird and not the movements of the bird or kind of like the excited nature of the background. So I had a lot of, I had a lot of, um, I put a lot of pencil marks down there and they I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work them into the background smooth out to the point where, um, you know, a, a, somebody that wasn't part of the construction of this drawing almost wouldn't even notice them. Those talons are just amazing. Yes. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next phase has got to get, we got to get this head transitioning into um, the body. And we're going to follow, we, can, we know what the anatomy is, but um, the anatomy is going to be hidden um, by the patterns. I have a question. Sure. You know how the chickadee, when it perches, like here, there should be uh, two talons on the top, but I only see one. Is the other just hidden in the darkness? Um, yes. So on my drawing, I tried to, I tried to express it. There's the, um, the one that you can really see heavily, and then there's another one that's just behind it. And you could spread it out, but let me zoom in on it. I think you can see it, it gets lost a little bit in, do you see how you can see it right along that edge? Yeah. There is a second one up there, um, but shouldn't there be three? But I don't know that, I mean, is there two in the back? Is there one in the back and then three in the front or one in the back and two in the front? I, I have no two idea. Two in the front. Cool, wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah, there's like, look at that. I mean, there's, I don't even know how to, it's so small that you were not really going to be able to just, you know, like do justice. Um, but what I found is that the drawing birds toes, you, know, you have the length of it. And then it usually comes to like a fingertip, like almost like a pad, like a thumb pad. And then off of that ball or that orb, there is a very, um, defined talon shape even on the mm -hmm. smallest birds their fingernails um mm -hmm. you know it could be a velociraptor six inches long or it can be you know like a fraction of a millimeter um but it's it's they you know they're very very clear um so even though the the like the the, the nature of the skin or um is hard to represent um, you can still get something that looks like the the talon and you can kind of like 
you know, oversimplify it. It's a, it's a scale issue. Yeah, I love this little talon. Mm -hmm. um, and it does appear that there's a deep shadow being thrown, you know, on the wood. The grain of the wood runs this way. Yeah, and that's going to be important, I think, in the design. I could even drop this down. I can, I can make my hole a little bit smaller. And you can see the grain of the wood. <clears throat> that's what you call artistic license. You know, I do want this hole here, but to have the, the whole gap of the hole running off the composition, you know, I feel like it's stronger if we can close that thing off. Anyway, focusing on the background is uh, is important, but it might be a little premature at this stage. But it's starting to look good. I mean, we have, I'd say, 25% of the bird um, resolved. All right, so we got the nape of the neck. We got these gray feathers. Wow. Um, luckily for me, well, maybe not luckily, I'm going to erase my internal bone structure. Just lose it a little bit. So it's not distracting. It's kind of this gray. Um, and now and now I'm looking at it further. Um, you know, you have the gray feathers at the top of the wing, you know, near the wrist. And then the wings and the and the back feathers kind of just bury it, bury the attachment of the wings, and it makes it for this really beautiful, um, you know, gray zone. You know, it looks like a, um, it's almost like a strawberry shape or something. It's like a large, gray, smooth, not without not without texture. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are tech, there is a texture there. Um, but it is it, the feathers at this area are you know darker than the white patch above, but not as black as the stripes. <clears throat> and where I was talking um, before, when you have um, I'm moving the picture all around. I should have taped it down. Um, because when you when you have the uh, if the picture moves, then you know, watch what happens with the angle of my the bottom of my or even like the the angle from the neck all the way down to the wingtip, like that angle. If I go like this, it's here, and if I go like this, it's vertical. So like you know the keeping this perpendicular is like so crucial. To the success of um, you know when we're getting into more of these straight line angles, and I think this is good now, but you know I'm, I have to readjust these wingtips, and that's what graphite also allows you these easy fixes, and you can take a. Um, you can take the angle of the back, you know, line it up with your pencil and then line it up with your drawing. You take the angle of the front of the wing, bring that across and line it up with your, with your drawing. You can hold it right up to the screen, sight those angles. And it is interesting because we have a lot of kind of important directions. So you have like the angle of these wing tips, the angle of these feathers, then you have the other scissor wing tip. And those layered feathers, and then you have the direction of the, the tail.
<laughs> I feel like just by clarifying my uh, the wings and the tail right there, I feel like it just became a chickadee. It, like for the, the whole time, I was like, "What's that, Stace?" A chickadee. Yes, that's what we're sketching. And I just love graphite and, you know, it doesn't, it's for some personalities, um, you know, working, reworking, shading, erasing, you know, clarifying. Um, sometimes it can be like frustrating. Some people like to be like more perfectionist about it. Um, but when you're, when you're drawing something for the first time that has proportions that you're not fully familiar with, um, you know, having the flexibility to, be able to erase um, and kind of, you know, sacrifice your first moves, you know, like, and even if they're right, um, it's not about individual moves. It's about, you know, the, col it's about collective. It's like about, it's like all of your, your pencil strokes, all of your values, all of the mark making, they have to all work together. And, you know, you could have had a mark that was true and right early, but it doesn't relate to 10 other decisions that you made. Um, so like you may have to erase something that you know what originally was um, correct. And you know, that's just goes with, it just goes with drawing. So now I have to figure out how I'm going to, um, I love this little gray patch that I did below the, um, below the white patch, you know, as we transition from the head into the neck and the neck into the body, there are these little feathers that, um, there's both light and dark feathers. They seem like they're layered. Um, you know, I may not be able to do each individual feather and I don't have the bird in front of me. Um, you know, if I, if the bird was actually here, I could like stick my finger in here and I could like, you know, figure out you know, what the feathers were doing. I could like stretch its wings out. I could, you know, there's a lot, you know, if you had the bird, you know, you can, you can find more information. So we are a limit, little bit limited with what is what we're capable of doing here with um with the photo, but it's okay. It's, it's still, we have plenty of information. So even though I would like to know in my own mind a little bit more about what these feathers are doing on the back, um, I need to still come up with a mark making um, representation of it. And then I was I was pointing that out because. Um, these feathers below this gray patch, they're super high contrasty, meaning you have like basically black, mostly black feathers with these light pinstripes, you know, and I think the, the, the white pinstripes are the actual, you know, the, the very edge of the blade, the very edge of the blade of the, the feather itself. And again, I don't know if that's true either. That's just what it appears. And, you know, if the bird was here, you could pull his feathers out. And look at it. Um, you know, uh, I know a lot of people keep birds, not keep birds, but keep bird feeders. And, um, you know, if you ever find a bird, you know, a dead bird, or if your cat ever like brings one home, um, you know, I don't know if you should wear a mask or something like that, but like, you know, take it and you can like draw it. I mean, like, it, like if you find a fresh dead bird, um, they're like the most beautiful things ever. Um, and you know, then you, you can be like a vulture, like vultures were considered sacred in ancient times because they relied wholly on God and the universe to pro provide them for food. So like, you know, raptors, like eagles and hawks, they would like actually hunt their prey and kill to eat. And vultures would just like wait and wait for, you know, the, the, you know, the nature to provide them with food, which is kind of interesting. So if you find a, if you find an element of nature, um, even if it's alive, like if it's a turtle, go grab your sketchbook and um, draw them. Oh my gosh, look at this. Is it here? Hold on, I have to run downstairs. I was studying, um, that's another influence that I had. Um, Van Gogh did that. Van, there's, a, there's this Van Gogh sketch, and I think we'll have time to do that because we're almost done with this chickadee. Yeah, let me run downstairs and grab it. Um, and we'll get to see how he made some of his marks. He basically has, a, it's, it's like a little sketchbook page where he's got um, 
you know, a dead bird sketched from a couple different angles. Um, and we'll see if we can, uh, you know, parlay some of his concepts into our concepts. Oh man, I can't believe that. That's gonna be so good. All right, hold on. Last thing before I go that you guys can work on, um, you know, before I run downstairs, there's a cast shadow, a really crisp cast shadow, which makes me think this was kind of done in the studio. Um, you know, like uh, artificially lit by a major photographer. Um, you know, but it's still nice. It's still nice to have. Um, it's just because they did it. Just artificially doesn't mean that it doesn't help clarify um, your bird. So we do have a, a mostly light bird up against the shadow. There's this other gap down here. So you can you know, really put this bird into a background, but even if you don't do an intense uh, background, having a cast shadow um, could be really useful. And it can help even clarify. Um, it's almost like you get a silhouette of the bird um, without any of the detail. So it really helps define the bird just by accurately copying the shadow. And not only do you draw the shape of the shadow onto the wood, you almost understand what is the shape in between uh, the bird and the shadow. This is the negative space in here. Nice. Let me see, I think I have, I think the book is here. Not my bag. <clears throat> Where is that book? I'm sorry, guys and gals. Usually it's over my left shoulder. Yes. Did, are you sure you look there? <laughs> okay, what did I do? What did I do? I must have left it at school. I must have left it at school. I cannot even believe it. I'm so sorry. Let me see if I can find it online. It would be so good. And then I, I think it really was one of the, uh, the reasons I gravitated towards this project. Mm. Van Gogh, sketchbook drawings, dead birds. Ooh. 
Okay, cool. Yeah. Wow. It's so nice. That's them, all right. All right, let me save this. It's a little sad, actually. You're talking about all these dead birds. I know, it's a little sad, but I'll show it to you anyway. It's a beautiful drawing. And I have studied this drawing. So. For sure, let's see it. So there he spread, oh, see, wow. see what I'm saying? He like spread out the wings. You know, there's the, I, I mean, I don't even know if it's a chickadee. I don't think it's a chickadee, but who knows? I love the mark making there though. Yeah. And then I think he turned his sketchbook this way to get those two angles or maybe like that, no. This is how it's presented. But I think this is how he drew it. But how could he have drawn this one? This one feels like it should have been, well, I think that's right on his back. Oh, that one looks like it's on its belly because it's. I'm talking about this one on the bottom. Yeah, so am I. Yeah. Don't you think it looks like he's laying on his back? Like this would be the ground plane? I think that's the ground plane, but I'm thinking it's laying on its belly with its head to the side because you see its legs. They look like the no, talons. This is, are... this is definitely the belly. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the beak is pointing up. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Excuse me. And the wings are behind the belly. Yes. And his, he's, his fingers his wing, are... he's basically laying on his wing, sort of. Yeah. And then and this one, I mean, who, know, who knows what this one is? I mean, it is a little sad. Oh no, I hope it didn't bum everybody out. I don't know what the to marks say. Are, the marks are gorgeous though. Okay, well, yeah, I'm glad we didn't draw this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we stuck with the living, with like the living chickadee. All right, let's finish this. Let's finish this bad boy and then see if we can um, <clears throat> maybe do, maybe do uh, another, another one. All right, let's have this. Let's also do, I'm going to, what is it, 1140? Okay, yeah, I'm going to take three more minutes and detail these, the tail. Yeah, how do you get how do you get a dark tail feather with like a light crisp edge? And that's that's not an easy charge. It's almost like you have to like keep coming, you have to like get a light runner and then keep carving it out. Cool. Feathers go this way, feathers go this way, feathers go that way. They spread out. There's a little texture, some marks, delicate feathers in the front, less delicate in the back. And if I change my angle, see how I change the angle? Like how my, this is where you wanna, um, you wanna like punch your darks. So the darkest part of the picture is probably in the eye. So you're gonna add some dark low lights to the eye. So this like middle stretch right here. And if you look at mine, I mean, I'm drawing graphite. And so it's the angle of the light that makes it seem reflective. Like if I tilt it, you can actually see how dark I was able to get. It was, Dark line behind the back, a little bit in the front of the of the throat, and then some of these deeper shadows in the wings.
And, you know, you get a silhouette by drawing all of the forms, you know, where, where you have a, look at how you have a crisp edge at the tip of these wings here, super crisp. And then you have another high contrast crisp edge on the tail. But then as you come from the tail up into these feathers at the bottom, you know, the, the, the feathers soften it out. So you don't, you know, you don't have a sharp edge. You know, you could have a, you know, a soft edge where you have a crisp edge up here where the feathers lay flat. And then the background and the shadow, they get lost a little bit there. All right. Oh, really? Have... Oh, What's that? You think you need more time, Stace? No, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I said I was gonna like get on board. I am on board. Did you catch up? Let's see. Let's oh, see sure. All right, hold on. Does anybody want to go first? Ellie usually are ready to go. You want to show it? Oh, Ellie, hold that a little bit higher and freeze. Yeah, I think nice. that's. Like, I think that's that might be a really good solution too. Is having the um, just the legs be dark. Yeah, you know, they're black objects, and even yeah. though they might be reflective, they they stand out better being dark than being light. At least compared to my own drawing. Um, Sebastian, I got you next. You want to show it? Place pin. Uh, I decided to Sebastian, make it. Sebastian, you're always so fast. Hold it up there, Sebastian, and a little closer to the screen. I mean, now, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, did you make that up, or did you like Google um, nice. you know, bird bird skeleton? I tried to Google uh, chickadee skeleton. But uh, there was no complete chickadee skeleton, so I found a robin one instead. Nice. Um, yeah. Such a good study. Um, when I was in art school, you know, this is for college, but um, we looked at the Sistine ceiling and all the poses that Michelangelo chose for the body. And then we took um, tracing paper and we built the bone structures of the human underneath, you know, underneath that. And the thing about those poses is that they're, they're so contorted that they like a regular human couldn't hold them without like you know pulling a muscle or something um so it's really interesting to see where the distortions and the extreme uh you know the extreme poses or even unnatural poses occur um, by studying the underlying structure um all right let's see uh dara i've got you next do you want to show um mine looks kind of like a robot <laughs> cool. No way. I, I don't see anything about that. Yeah, I don't see the robot either. Um, I love the pattern and the texture though. And it sits so nicely in that page. Like in that, in like, you know, sometimes like what my I always have to crop my drawings down. That that bird sits so perfectly in that rectangle. And I would sign that one. Um, all right, Janaya, you want to see yours? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, all right, Janaya, now I can. So and if you sure. can go up, just a little uh, back down and up a little bit, like two inches, and up a little bit more, <laughs> sorry, and freeze. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, the, value, nice. the values are really nice. It looks like your tail might need to be a little bit more substantial. Like, the, yeah, the t I think the tail is tricky because it, you're actually seeing the top of the tail and like basically a little bit of the side. Um, but I think it just needs like be a stronger shape, like thicker, wider. Thank um, you. But, but yeah, no, but like the, all the values are great. Uh, Simone, you want to show yours? Place pan. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, a little further from the screen, Simone, if you will. Yep, and freeze it. Very nice. Yeah. 
Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And the background, that's like, it it looks, it doesn't need a background. Madeline, you're up. Good work. Oh, yes. Nice handwriting. Maddie, hold on. Maddie, you're another quick one to quickly go away with your work. A little close, further from, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to get that bottom, what you have written, because I can't see it. Oh, don't do that. All right. Uh, You can. It's just something I was writing for something else I was writing. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, the branch is a good, the branch is a good solution if you're not going to do like, you know, the hole in the log. Um, No, you got anything? Good work. Thank you. Oop, replace pen. Sorry. Madeline, I got to remove you. Okay. Noah, where did you go? He's there. Oh, there you are. Yeah, that. Oh, nice. Fly back just a few inches. Oh, and that was, good. That was a good pun, Jace. I like that pun. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, they look, yeah. that looks good. The, um, I'm trying to, there's something weird about it. I don't know what it is. I think maybe the, um, like the wing tips might be like larger overall. I don't know. Did you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not great, but that's what I got. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, but honestly, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice drawing. I'm just, I'm just like, uh, there's just something that was like, I think it was the size of the wingtips. Um, all right, uh, Jackson, you want to show it? Uh, yeah. Nice. Best drawing, but. Oh, that's cool. The heads. Yeah. There we go. Hold on, Jack. Wow, there's a lot of flow to that. Nice style. Yeah. Um, and you got the hole to mm-hmm. work. I mean, mm-hmm. the, there is something, there's a thing called lost and found where there's two objects that are the same value and they happen to overlap. And like the beak and the hole is that example. And you can like it's okay to lose a little bit of the beak up against the, that hole. And, you know, the photo does that and in a weird way, the tongue is able to like kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that like staying true to the nature, um, you know, in the end tends to work out a little bit. And I feel like I kind of want to maybe even make, I was, I was erring towards lightening the hole behind the head. Um, and maybe the answer was to actually darken the hole behind the head. Um, hmm. that's good yeah good work um, okay cool yeah I think that's everybody can I see yours once again Trevor yeah, yeah, final? yeah. Mm-hmm. screen share cool. um, all right great we have Thank you. Is this the same? This no, this isn't the same one. That's interesting. But it's the same scenario. Look at that one. It's like the exact same thing, but it, the the angle of the the hole is different. But the beak is like totally lost up against the uh, the shadow inside the hole of the tree. Interesting. Look at these little babies. Oh my god. Aww. And those pussy willows are so pretty. I know. They're like the fuzziness of the pussy willows and the fuzziness of the little babies. Yes. That's so funny. Um, I might try one of these guys. So there are two different types of chickadees. I do know that. Like not based on gender but actually based on species and there are some that have like with you know don't have the stripe and then some that do have the stripe and some that don't have the stripe and then i guess there's some that have this warm chestnut flavor um coloring oh yeah it's right here but the names are right on here okay yeah so black chapped chickadees don't have the stripe the mountain chickadee has the stripe and then the chestnut backed chickadee has the rust color um underneath there wow great and even this design is really kind of nice um in the sense that the birds are able to kind of stand out they're ideal they're they're idealized posed 
and then their environment is kind of more muted. This is definitely a science illustration, not necessarily that aesthetic, but the way that they flow around this picture, I think is so interesting. You know, the gazing direction, this guy's looking down at this one, this one's looking down here, and then he's looking up there. So, you know, the way their eyes gaze, bring us through this triangular spoke almost like of a wheel. Um, and it's, yeah, and they so, show three distinct poses. Um, this is a little bit above, this is a little bit below, and this is extremely, you know, above looking down. Huh. Who's this artist? I bet you they don't even tell you. Yeah, they don't tell you. How big they actually are. I mean, I know how big they are, but I want to hold one. Um, all right. I don't have time really to do much more. I don't want to do another one with this limited time. I really like the picture of the baby sitting in a row. Yeah, they're sweet. You don't have to ask twice. <laughs> I'll, I'll put. I'll, I'll. I'll zoom in on it, and we can we can sketch it. You might be able to take a uh, take a screenshot. Um, yes. And that's about as close up as I can get. Thing is so large. This will be, maybe we should do a little gesture exercise. That's There's that Regina Spector song, it's like two birds. All right, how would I do this? Where's my starting point, my ending point? I'm not suggesting anybody has to do this, but this is just for fun. See if you, how many you can draw within five minutes. Oh, no pressure, no pressure. No pressure or anything. Okay. All right, here's my S curve on the branch. Oval. Oval, oval. <clears throat> I'm trying to sketch the vectors. I'm gonna crunch this guy down, make this guy perfectly straight up and down. Wow. All right, then I'll do, see how their heads are overlapping on each one. A little to the right, a little to the right, a little bit higher, a little bit lower. A little bit to the left. Man, it's almost as if they're like the same bird, but they definitely are not. All right, I'm gonna do the V, upside down V for the angle of the beak. I guess it's a triangle really. Side view, and they have yellow beaks it looks like at this stage. He's looking so to the left. Darn cute. Looking a little bit straightforward. They are pretty cute. All right, so we are below looking up. <clears throat> and this this is the, um, not the mountains breed. This is the part that, this is the one that doesn't have a, um, this doesn't have a stripe. So it's just a, pa a white patch on the side of the head. So the top of the head is black, the throat is black, and then like the side, the lower half side is light. All right, but I don't think we're there quite yet. I'm going to do left wing, right wing, left wing, slight right, left, no right. Interesting. Left wing, slightly right wing, slight left, slight right. And on this last one, I got a little bit on both sides. I'm a little, not annoyed, but I wish I could see tails. I feel like the tails would do good. 
um, the pussy willows are going to be little triangles. Oh, I'm thinking hokusoi. I know, so hokusoi. When I say triangles, I mean like um uh what is the shape I'm thinking of? The candy corns. They're like candy corn shapes. Yum. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna do the eyes. Left eye, right eye, left eye, left eye, left eye, right eye, and left eye. Right oh my eye. gosh, the little feet that you did. I didn't even do little feet yet. Oh, those are the, those oh, are the those pussy are willows. The... Oh, well, now God. that you told me, all right, I'm going to do some talons. Oh, do you know I just glanced up and and read them as feet? No, I know. They do read like feet. That's why I had to put real feet in. Right, right, right. Aww. <laughs> Without the wings, they look so much like snowmen. Yes, they do. Yes. Um, okay, so I'm going to do shade the throat. And then shade the crown, shade the throat, shade the crown. So I'm creating the white patch by creating the top and the, the throat and the head. So throat, head, throat, head, throat. And then they got black wings, right? <laughs> this one looks so sad and scary and by the way if you look at my finger these are unbelievably small like i'm drawing Aww. microscopic mine look a tiny bit like frogs And I, the wings aren't really black. They just have, um, I guess they're black with like white spokes. And those that, I think that's how you can tell these are babies is cause they're just like, they're just, there's all these little like baby fur. Fuzzy, yeah, it's they're not, fuzzy. not like streamlined. What's that Stace? They're, they're fuzzy. Yeah, they're fuzzy still. <clears throat> find the center find the center there's these little black patches that look like they're like right at the center of the uh, the chest there and that can you know indicating the center line can be really helpful and then even though there's no tails i'm still going to put one in there there's nothing like a little tail coming at the bottom of the branch it says bird much better than taillessness. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Whoa. Did anybody draw? Did anybody, did anybody do this process? Can I see um, you guys want to just, you want, I'm going to stop the share. You guys want to just show it? Make sure you get a screenshot, though. Well, let me drop this. So you well, the can you put yours. <laughs> what? Can you put yours back up? No. Please. I don't know if I want this to go on the record, though. Uh, well, that's OK. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They look cute in the photo, and they look like uh, you know, like gremlin frogs on my drawing. Yeah, but don't they look a little like frogs? <laughs> they do. 
Um, okay, it's 12.02. Who wants to show? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whoever holds it up first can be pinned. All right, Ellie, you're up. Yes, they do look like little snowman. <laughs> Those cute little snowman. Wow, um, all right. so cute. Uh, Madeline, I have you next. You don't want to show? I was, I was observing the process. <laughs> okay. I mean, it was like so fast. That works. Anybody else, did anybody else sketch it too? Attempt it? No, Sebastian, Simone, did you? Simone, did you sketch it? Do you want to show it? Can you say that again? Did you get to sketch it? Uh, the, no. Like, the, baby, the baby birds? No, I was working a little bit more on the other bird. Okay. Do you want to show your other bird? Janai or Dara? Yeah, it's, it's the same bird as before. That's okay. You said you were working a little more on it. Do you want to show? Yeah. Good. Good. Well, we'll look at it. Oh, I, I didn't. I was just watching. All right, cool. Um, all right, uh, what was it? Simone, let's, can we see one last look? Yeah. At the bird and then I'll... Just a couple of extra details. Oh, yeah, clean. you did work on that more. Nice. Yeah, it does look clean. All right, y'all, hopefully What's that was fun. Ones? Everything always takes longer. I always think I'm like, oh yeah, we'll get 10 things done and then, oops. An hour and a half goes by and it's one chicken. <clears throat> um, that being said, I think officially I did draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chickadees today. <clears throat> Albeit seven of them were very fast. Um, all right, everybody, have a great week. I will see you next week. I think we're on. Thank so you. We'll Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.